Yes, <laughs> did you see that? As my mother used to say. Yes, the no peace, yeah. I think I, I say that to my kids. I'm getting all my notes in gear. Right, good. How are we all? You may finish your little chats. We're rocking and rolling. We're talking about the future of mobility. We've done trade, tick. Future of mobility, building sustainable travel for all, which is very exciting. Anmol Jaggi, co-founder and CEO of Blue Smart, co-founded in January 2019, India's first and largest integrated EV ride hailing and charging company, which is very impressive. And Sophia Nadu, managing partner of BP Ventures, which has invested in Blue Smart. 13 million, and you led a $25 million Series A round. Got my facts right. And this, Sophia, is your first BP Ventures, first venture. Let's repeat the word venture, BP Ventures, into India. What was it about Anmol that persuaded you to break free, enter new territory? <laughs> so um, BP Ventures uh, is, a, is a corporate venture arm of uh, BP. Yeah. Uh, our focus is on uh, disruptive tech and also uh, very uh, different uh, business models. Uh, Blue Smart is our first uh, venture investment in India. It's our 10th in mobility across the world. But when we looked at India, we looked at uh, how do we accelerate the energy transition and how do we uh, find ways of encouraging the entire value chain from EV manufacturer through to uh, customers how do we encourage them to, to, to move faster uh, to electrification of the transport uh, options? We looked at Blue Smart, and, and because they were all electric, and because they were an integrated offer, they were very customer-centric, they had a very good digital tech stack, mm -hmm. and also they, they, were, they were born electric. And that's what we liked about them as well. And the fact that they were scaling up in Delhi, which is one of the biggest mobility markets in India, gave us a lot of confidence that they knew what it, what it required to scale up as well. Plus, we like the team as well. Yeah, which, which helps. It's always good to like the team. Anmol, what are you doing with the money? What are you doing with the capital? And how are you transforming? Because this is what you're essentially setting out to do. You know, how are you transforming the ride-hailing industry in, in India? Sure. So first, uh, two things on the previous one. Uh, BP also led the second round that we did yeah, after yeah, that. So there was a 25 million that we did in September. There was yeah. a 25 million we just concluded. BP led that round too. Yeah. Uh, so we've had uh, the fortune of BP investing in twice uh, instead of once. Will there be a third? Uh, you ask ma'am. Uh, yeah. uh, we'll <laughs> be might go breaking we'll, news. <laughs> we'll be more than happy to. Uh, <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be more than happy. But yes, the decision squarely rests with ma'am. Good. Uh, on the on the on the on the fact that uh, how are we changing ride hailing in the country is that. In, traditionally, ride hail in India has been all about giving extraordinary incentives to driver partners, yeah. lure the, luring them in, then reducing the incentives, and the driver partners get fallen by the wayside mm. because of lower incentives and lower earnings. What we have tried to do at the core is to build, an, first of all, an all-electric ride hail business, mm. which means we are not just doing very good with emissions and decarbonization, but doing exceptionally well on unit economics. Ride Hill as a business has not seen one dollar of profit being created by anybody across the globe. Not one dollar of profit has been created by any ride hailing firm. Perhaps Blue Smart is going to be the first firm which is going to generate real profits, real cash when, flows. When, when, when? I like, I like breaking news. <laughs> when are we going to have this first profit by a ride hailing company? So in the, in the core geographies where we operate, uh, which is Delhi NCR, uh, we expect that in the next 60 days we should be in the black. And so, so you'll be the first ride-hailing company, electric ride-hailing company in the world to be profitable. No, we'll be a, any ride-hailing company to go profitable, not yeah. just any electric ride-hailing company. Yeah, to it, go. Right, right. Which, which, which is impressive. No wonder you went for them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, 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 when you're at BP Ventures, you take risks. It, yeah. it, it's about risk it's as well. So you don't know. It? But what we did to try, and, to try and reduce the risk as well, we've also encouraged a partnership uh, with GeoBP. So GeoBP is a, a big partnership with... Reliance and BP, which helps to scale up uh, mobility mm. and convenience offers, best in class mobility and convenience offers. And so, what that partnership has helped uh, to a degree is help uh, give uh, Blue Smart uh, the confidence that they will have tra charging infrastructure where they need to deploy the vehicles. 
And that's an important piece, because it's still nascent in terms of this whole category yes. within Charging India. Charging infrastructure. Yes. Yes. And, and, and a lot's been done, isn't it, within India? And you're talking about super hubs, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Tell us, tell us a bit more about sure. that. So, uh, so with BP, it's not just about the check size. It's also about the other value adds that you get in terms of yeah. setting up of charging infrastructure. Uh, but uh, on the on the super hub side, I think how charging infrastructure globally was being created was one or two charging stations here or there in some uh, hotel, in some mall, not something which is up to scale. Uh, if we have to decarbonize mobility, if we have to make it, if we have to make electric the mainstay, you cannot have just charging stations on the fringe. What we, had, what we did we at... We need Luz to debunk range anxiety. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what it's about, Absolutely. isn't it? I've got the lingo, you see. Yeah, so, so we built out, uh, we've built out now 14 of these, uh, 50,000 square feet, each of them having 100 plus charging stations. The visible effect of somebody passing through that charging station gives them confidence that, yes, there are so many chargers and I will not have that range anxiety which you are talking of. Yeah. So, so we have now 14 of these super EV charging hubs. Uh, we operate 600 fast chargers, close to 15, 1600 slow chargers at these hubs. And, and that's how we believe our driver partners get the confidence of charging their cars. Mm. And, and the world at large, when they see such kind of large scale super EV hubs, because remember, everybody in the world has seen tons of petrol pumps, tons of gasoline pumps. Yeah. They are very common on and at the end of every street. What they have not seen is large scale charging infra. And when they see it, just the visual effect of that creates in their head uh, the notion that, yes, electric is coming soon and electric is, is going to become big. There's some amazing figures, Anmol. India set this goal to achieve easy EV sales, accounting for 30% of private cars, 70% of commercial vehicles, and 80% of two and three wheelers by, by the year 2030. But still, some would say India is lagging in EV penetration versus other large markets. What do you need from policymakers? What do you need from states, from governments? They're doing a lot, Anmol. I know they're doing a lot. What policies, what initiatives do you still need to help penetration of electric mobility in the country? Sure. So I think one of the things that we picked up from London itself is ULEZ. I think uh, we need to, if in India we can have in every metropolitan uh, city of the country, the ULEZ zone, what I saw, what, what we see here in London, yeah. I think that will be a super great explain initiative. Explain to our audience who aren't aware of it, just explain what that is. Sure, so yeah. that's the ultra low emission zone. Uh, yeah. I think uh, portions of London, uh, heart of London is a ultra low emission zone. If you want an ICE vehicle to enter into the ULEZ, you have to pay a 12 and a half pound a day kind of a charge for ICE vehicles to enter into that zone. Uh, so we would want that, uh, we would want that the cities where so many millions and millions of citizens live are actually breathing great air. And for that, if ULEZ zones can be created, a lot of uh, governments already done a lot of work on the taxation. So EVs in the country, EVs in India are only taxed at 5%, mm. which is which is absolutely fair. I think I think ICE is, ICE is at 18%, EV at 5%. So you're already giving us the tax advantage, mm. which is great. Uh, there is a, there is a, uh, there is a subsidy scheme which is there, which uh, the capital subsidy scheme, which is which is very very good. It's 150 dollars per kilowatt hours. Amazing. So all of that is great. Uh, I, I think uh, as a as a as a startup founder, I could have not asked for more. Yeah. But if you if I if I but really let's think, ask for more. Come on. Yeah. Let's ask. If I for if more. I really have to think about it, because we are sitting in the city of London. Yeah. I would really want to say create ULEZ zones in every yeah. metropolitan city of the country and ensure that citizens get clean air and that's where EV proliferation also rises. What would you like, Sophia? Well, um, ULEZ zones is one thing. Uh, I think how can we encourage more and more, uh, particularly commercial use, more and more shared mobility on yeah. every single, in every single street, every single city in India, and electric shared mobility. Uh, private car ownership in India is uh, three in a hundred. So it's a diff very different marketplace to the UK where there's a lot of private cars so you can afford to have uh, home charging. Here it very much depends on having hubs and having out of home and fleet depot charging. So I think encouraging infrastructure build out will be a huge help, but also really encouraging more and more electric mobility on cities, in city streets across India will help immensely. And also when you get to last mile, you get to other commercial applications as well. And being able to encourage those will ensure people are not encouraged to go and buy uh, private EVs and then clog the streets up. Because that's not what we trying to do to ensure a very healthy population. Yeah, what about the UK-India bridge, the 
which we talk about, uh, Sophia, how, how can Indian e-mobility startups succeed here? Well, here's a good example. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've seen in, in all of my due diligence, not just in BlueSmart, for other companies we're looking at investing, there's an incredible amount of what I call frugal innovation focused, but incredible innovation, digital tech stacks. Yeah. There's a lot of, I think, more partnerships that, that UK companies, which has, the, has, has, has cash, has access to customers, but also probably needs a little bit more, a little, get a bit smarter on, on the type of digital uh, uh, services that they can bring to customers, and particularly fleets. So I do think that there's a number of companies which, um, which can be introduced to partners here in the UK, and we will have what, facilitators. What's stopping it? What, what, what's stopping those partnerships? How can we? Just, uh, perhaps lack of awareness. Yeah. One is just lack of awareness, um, and also, again, mobility is still quite nascent, even in the UK. So you're still, we're still building up our, our let's say, our proof of, proof of concepts and pilots. So it's going to take a bit of time, but I, I wish we could accelerate further. Yeah. And we're doing our best, and that's why I'm here uh, speaking uh, with Anmol. I think it's a very important topic, and so happy to help support uh, much more, much more uh, uh, Indian, let's say Indian tech talent, but also um, UK know-how and work that together. I mean, well, India is one of the largest uh, auto OEMs in, yeah. in, in the world. Yeah, They must be able to figure out how to produce low-cost EVs as well. There's so much tech talent in yeah. India. What's it like to be part of that just thriving ecosystem? Uh, I think I think it's, it's great to be surrounded by brilliant people. Uh, my father used to say that if you get surrounded by six brilliant people, you'll also be, you'll also convert into one. So <laughs> I think I think we have uh, tons and tons of them there, and 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 the and the quality of innovation, especially that we are doing on building what we will call as at Blue Smart, what we will call as the first born electric tech stack for ride hailing. Now you would understand that there's a lot of problem in ride hailing tech stack. The ride hailing companies don't know the fuel that a car is carrying. In electric, in, in, a, in a normal ICE car, you can charge, your, you can fuel up your car, go by the curbside, fuel your car in five minutes and be back. Electric cars are not that. You have to build a tech stack which understands what is the fuel in the car, where is the next charging station. If I go to the next charging station, will it be available or not? Mm. So there is a lot of digital tech stack that needs to be rethought and rebuilt for ride hailing companies across the globe to adapt to electric mobility. And I think that is what BlueSmart is doing. Uh, exceptionally well, and, and we are very proud of the of the tech stack that we're building at Blue. Sophia, you've invested BP Ventures over eight hundred million dollars into eighty plus companies. What an exciting time for you! Do, well, you, do, do you just sort of lick your lips at the opportunities <laughs> that, that are out there right now? What 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 makes you salivate besides the gentleman to your right? <laughs> what ideas? What technologies make you salivate right now? Um, I think uh, business models that uh, are really helping to electrify last mile, uh, passenger mobility, mm -hmm. that really excites me. Because that's, um, it, it, you think of India, uh, you're moving uh, 40 odd million parcels every single day. Imagine if you could electrify that, that last span and first mile. You're moving millions and millions of people every day. How can we get more and more people into EVs uh, uh, around cities? And I mean, that's exciting. There are lots of companies uh, who are, who are out there, but again, it's still hard. You'd have to really, really find those gems uh, who yeah. are gonna scale and gonna scale successfully and have the passion and the heart and the vision of folks like Anmol. Yeah, final word, Anmol, to our audience, both virtual and, and physical audience. Send us away feeling good. You've done that already, but just sure. give us a final last no, I, line I, I, of inspiration on e-mobility and where it's heading. Well, I think what we are trying to build is not just for us. Uh, the world needs a better future. Uh, AQI needs to go to two, just like London, all across the globe. And electric mobility is is going to get us rid of all uh, half of the ills of the world. Can we get can can go away if we all transform to electric mobility? Fantastic. Next up with Edie, we're going to have our reimagined series, shaping the future of digital in the UK India relationship. But a massive thank you to Anmol and to Sophia. Absolutely fantastic, Chag. It's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.